Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Dallas Chamber of Government Affairs in this fine, gorgeous February outside. Um, and so our guest today is Carrie Pippinich with Mid-Columbia Economic Development District. Most of you know her. If you don't, shame on you. You should know her by now. Um, so, but with that, we are going to go around the room and introduce yourself just so she has a recollection of who's all in the room for our community partners. And I'm going to start with David Peters. Good morning, everybody. Dave Peters, Columbia Cascade Housing, Mid Columbia Housing Authority. I've said it many times, we have a lot of COVID relief for mortgages and rent. So please send people our way. But we also do home buying um, and you know other aspects of home ownership. So send anybody that has a question about home ownership our way. Thanks. Awesome, great. Thank you, David. Corliss Marsh. Good morning, everyone. Today, this morning, I want to remind you next Tuesday night on the 15th um, at the Art Center, we're going to present the checks to the award winners of the Wasco County Cultural Trust Grant. So, six o'clock at the Art Center Tuesday night. Thank you. Um, go ahead and put a reminder in the chat, Corliss, if you would like, or you can make Scott do that just so we have it in front of us. Okay. And thank you. Dan Spots. Thank you, Lisa. Dan Spots, uh, Community Relations Capital Projects, Columbia Gorge Community College. We have three work groups focusing now on uh, feasibility, long term sustainability of a uh, public child care center in the Dalles and perhaps a distributed model looking also to uh, Hood River and Cascade Locks and we'll keep you posted on progress. Thank you. Thank you for all your work on that. Julie Reynolds. Julie Reynolds, Fort Dalles Museum Commission and um, our director has announced his resignation effective April 8th. Um, okay. It was not unexpected. Um, so we'll be finding a new director. All right. Well, let me know how I can help in that search. Okay. Thank you. Scott McKay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Lisa. Scott McKay, director of the Mid Columbia Senior Center for another three weeks, two weeks, two weeks. The couple of things I just want to announce is that everyone's been talking about test kits for COVID. We have some at the Mid Columbia Senior Center at this okay. point in time. And, and I think the Art Center, I think Steve. Scott at the Art Center, they also have some kits and, and the public health department and many other places in the county. So if you know anyone who needs one, just have them come by the center and we will give them one. And then the other thing is the, and maybe there's gonna be a, a, a vaccine clinic coming up on February 21st through the 28th at the old Griffith Motors across from Ace Hardware from 11 to six. And we've been telling people no appointments are necessary, it's just a drop in basis. And then the last thing, if you need any help with taxes, the AARP tax aid program is starting up on the 18th here at the center on Fridays. And you just need to make an appointment. It, um, just call the center and we will help you do that. And that and that and that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. County Commissioner Kathy Schwartz. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I don't have a lot this morning because you listened to me blab for almost an hour last week. A um, couple of things. I guess I'll just take this moment to send a message on to Dan Spots. I had a meeting yesterday with Cliff Benz's staff, and I talked to them about the need for child care and your initiative that's going on here at Columbia Gorge Community College. So I passed on your information to their staff, so they committed to possibly looking for some resources, who knows, but um, hopefully you will hear from them if you don't let me know. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm sure you've all heard that the governor's gonna lift the mask mandate um, March 31st, possibly a bit sooner if um, our hospitalizations decrease before then. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, certainly want folks to remember that that doesn't mean that we don't have COVID anymore, but it means that we have, we should have hospital capacity so that if you do get very sick, we'll have a bed for you. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, Brian Tuck. Good morning, Brian Tuck. Happily retired. Scott, you're almost there. So 
Hang in there. <laughs> Philip Brady. Good morning, Philip Brady. And I'm going to start introducing myself in a new way. I'm, I'm a candidate for county commissioner. I'll be having a, a campaign, a virtual campaign kickoff on February 20th. And I'll send out an invitation for that as soon as, uh, as soon as we get a link going for it. It's going to be a good online event with music from some local artists. I also want to speak uh, to something from uh, regarding the Columbia Medical Center. There was a, a letter, an excellent letter from Dr. Uh, Stelzer explaining why we're going to be building a new hospital uh, campus, and also a critical letter from a person uh, in the letters to the editor. I bring it up here at this point because the advice from this group has been to, to respond to criticisms, and I will be doing that. The person said I had not written back to them, and I, I checked. I did send a letter back to somebody with a very similar name, so I'm going to investigate that, but the point I want to make is yeah, we, we as a hospital do want to get our message out, but I'm not going to, you know, criticize somebody in public for a mistake that might have to do with their spam spam box or something. So things are, are turning the corner at MCMC, as Dan has pointed out, where you've got hiring going on, and we've really hit a reset button. City Councilor Dan Richardson. Good morning. Thank you, Lisa. I would say for those of you who don't already have it marked prominently on your calendar that the 14th the evening of the 14th is a, a good one to uh, circle in red there because we're gonna have a city council meeting and it's going to be an interesting one i think it's worthwhile there'll be reports on the new navigation center which of course many of you have heard about a report on the dog river pipeline construction which is very important to our water delivery long time coming we're going to get actually that underway this year thank goodness and also one on the city's community survey or visioning survey so that might be worth uh, hearing about and i will say just perhaps mark on your calendar there's going to be a follow-up sort of a virtual town hall on the 23rd so good stuff thanks guys you guys got a lot on Valentine's Day there, sir. <laughs> it's okay. We'll try, we'll try and keep it short. I know. Well, just we'll just encourage everybody to do Valentine's over the weekend and then pay attention to their community on Valentine's. Show a little love for the Dallas, right? There we go. We can we can spin this. Um, Scott Stevenson. You're on mute, sir. Thank you. There you go. Welcome back, Lisa. Thanks. Hope you had a successful trip down there. I did. Uh, we're excited because we, we have a uh, exhibit from your old stomping grounds from Crow's Shadow Institute oh. out in Pendleton. Yeah. So that's a great exhibit. It's in collaboration with uh, the Columbia Center for the Arts. Beautiful prints. It's an amazing story. Um, Lisa could probably tell you all about it. And um, we're also like, Corla said on the 15th, we're having that celebration of the Wasco County Cultural Trust uh, Awards. And then on the 17th, we have a writer's talk. We're getting that started back up with Jackie McManus. It's going to be with Yvonne Pepin Wakefield um, talking about her books with the cabins. Then on the 26th, uh, the exhibit that we have is focused on Native American artists. So that's the focus of Crow Shadow. So uh, if you haven't heard anything about it, it's amazing. Go to our website. Um, and we have a, a flute player, an American flute player. He's going to be coming to the center. Um, and he's actually a Grammy Award winning flute player. So we're really excited about that. We got a sponsor um, to take care of that for us. And that's going to be on the 26th, which is a Saturday. Um, so we got a lot of great programming coming up. Uh, it's a two month exhibit. Uh, really do come down. It's, um, it's, these are international and nationally recognized artists, one of which was actually in the Whitney Biennial, which is quite a big deal. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. And yes, Crow Shadow is an amazing, yeah, just amazing. We'll just leave it there. So um, Dawson, is it Quinton? Yes. Yeah, my name is uh, Dawson Quinton. I'm uh, the legislative director for Representative Greg Smith. So last week was my first meeting. So just attending another meeting just to hear a little bit more about the area. So thank you so much. 
Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate that. And Leah Matthew. Can you jump on? Here we go. Sorry. Go. Um, I, I'm the one that's still drinking my coffee this early in the morning. Um, I am the minister of the United Church of Christ Congregational, and I actually have a request uh, instead of an announcement. I am looking for someone to help us develop our website. It's in WordPress right now, and I just don't have the time to do the learning that I need to do to make it perfect myself. So if anybody knows somebody that does that, please contact me. Thank you. Okay. Is that a, is that a paid uh, opportunity? It is a paid opportunity, yes. Okay. Could you and put I your have tea um, and cookies too? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. like, could you put your email in the? Oh, can we get some contact info in the in the chat? I will. I will do that. Oh. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. You bet. All right. With that, oh. Carrie Pepinich, it is now all yours. And if you need me to do anything on this end, let me know. I will look for questions, hands and in the chat for you, so you don't have to even look for that stuff. It's all you, thank you. Good, well, thank you for having me. Um, I feel like I'm, a, I haven't been very good at attending this lately and I apologize for that. It's always something I've enjoyed over the years. It's been a little, little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think most of you know me, uh, Carrie Pippinich. Uh, I am uh, the Deputy Director for Economic Development at Mid-Columbia Economic Development District. Um, so I think you all have heard from our Transportation uh, Deputy Director about what's going on on that side of our world. So I'm going to leave that alone, um, but happy to pass along any questions or attempts to answer them if there are any that come up on that front. Uh, but I'm going to really focus on kind of my team and the economic development work that we do um, with our communities in our five county region. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, and Lisa, I'm going to look at you to tell me whether or not I get the uh, full screen or the one with the crazy black stuff? Is it good? You are full screen. It's nice. Sweet. Got it. Perfect. All righty. Um, so I'm going to start with just a quick, um, I think most of you also kind of know the gist of what Maquette is, but wanted to give a quick reminder. Um, we've been around for a, a little over 50 years now um, and serve a five county region, including our two Washington counties, Klickitat and Skamania, and then Hood River, Wasco and Sherman in Oregon as well. Um, we have a, a 21 member board to try to help represent that geography, but also key industry clusters and our private sector partners in economic development. Um, uh, and our mission is to promote the creation of family wage jobs, diversification of the economic base, and um, support growth, development, and retention in our business communities in the, in the five county area. So what does that really look like? Um, our real guiding document, um, both for McKed as an entity and also sort of our regional collaboration with um, partners on economic development, uh, is our comprehensive economic development strategy. And this is something that we um, as a region are required to do to receive funding from the Economic Development Administration. And they also provide some support to us to help facilitate the strategy process as well as support implementation of that um, on a five-year cycle. And we are just wrapping up uh, about a year-long process to update this document um, with partners from around the region. Um, despite that whole process being virtual this year, we were really lucky to have really great participation from uh, partners throughout the region. And thank you to several of you who uh, sat through all of that work with us as well and brought your ideas and perspective to that effort. And um, we had about 100 folks participate from our five county area in that process. And we are uh, working on finalizing the draft document. It was out for public comment um, in December, and we will present it to our board uh, in March for adoption. Um, and the, the strategy in this five-year cycle really focuses on uh, a strong business environment, ensuring our workforce 
uh, is able to participate and engage in access opportunities, um, looking at creating more resilient infrastructure uh, to support um, both community and economic development in, in our region. Uh, and then the last one, that's a little bit new, but I think something that we all have weaved through our work for years. Um, it's really giving some attention to the value of that regional collaboration and how much stronger we all are working together to meet some of these goals for our area. Um, so that's kind of the, the, <laughs> the 30 second version of what will end up probably being a 40 page document. So <laughs> when we get there, uh, we'll definitely make sure we're sharing that out with folks. Uh, and finding opportunities for our partners to engage in next steps with that as well. Um, so I wanted to dive into a couple of the things that we do to support implementation there. Um, and the first one is I would be remiss if I did not uh, touch on our business lending programs. Um, we are able to fill some uh, gaps for our business community when they're unable to access traditional financing. Um, we can be a little bit more flexible and um, and in our requirements uh, and and lend to some folks that perhaps the banks aren't willing to take a risk on yet um, so that they can then build those years of financials they need to be able to access that traditional lending. Uh, so our loan portfolio really focuses on job creation and retention, and we can do a variety of sizes of projects and types of projects with that lending um, down to sort of a pretty small loan amount, um, all the way up to a $250,000 loan amount, and we can pair different funding sources if it's a larger project that has a bigger gap. But we often will work in partnership with a bank or the state uh, business lending apparatus uh, to do some gap financing um, and businesses can access those resources for um, construction and equipment purchases, working capital, a whole variety of, of things that they might need to help support their business in growing. Um, and then last but not least, we also have an attainable housing loan fund um, that was seeded through regional solutions a few years back uh, to support lending for projects um, that serve between 80 and 120% of the area median income for their tenants um, or residents. Um, and we um, have been working hard on getting that out to some projects. Um, there are a few projects that have moved through that pipeline and some of the funds have come back. So we have some, some resource there to support housing as well. Um, and our, um, our loan fund manager, Amy Beaver, um, her contact info is here on the slides. If you have questions, she's your best bet to get a good answer, but you're welcome to direct them to me too. Um, and we can get you in touch with the right person. Uh, I did want to touch on um, sort of what that business assistance piece looked like um, and some of our broader response around COVID-19's impacts on our communities, um, in particular with that economic development lens. Um, we were lucky enough to be able to partner with um, Business Oregon at the state, as well as uh, local counties uh, and communities to help support bringing some of the federal care dollars out to our business community. Um, and I've got the numbers for what that looked like here with a, a couple of different pools of resources, both, like I said, those state funds, as well as uh, collaborating with uh, the counties, um, both Hood River and Wasco to help them get their um, additional care dollars focused on business assistance out the door quickly uh, as well. Um, so in addition to supporting staff and those who are also able to partner with the PUD um, in their work to provide uh, kind of bill relief for small businesses. And I think they ended, we ended up doing three rounds of that with them um, throughout kind of the first spring of the pandemic through the winter and back into summer again. Um, uh, and we're able to process about 200 of those to send to the PUD um, for them to do bill relief. So I uh, really appreciated the partnership and collaboration with the PUD and opportunity to do anything we could to kind of help reduce those operating expenses for our businesses when we knew there was a lot of uncertainty and challenge. 
Um, we were also able to provide a limited amount of relief to our business loan clients um, to help them kind of get through that initial uh, shutdown phase. Um, and then um, we're also doing some sort of broader things, thinking about um, how to help support our businesses adapt and um, prepare for these kinds of events moving forward um, through some assistance from Business Oregon for some training development, as well as partnership with our economic resilience team from around the region. And just a huge shout out to Lisa for all of her work with those trainings and opportunities as well. And it was uh, pretty powerful to see all of us coming together um, for some of those efforts um, to respond to the needs. Um, and then the last kind of piece that also helped lead into our economic development strategy is we did complete an economic needs assessment, uh, kind of looking at impacts from COVID and sort of opportunities for our region to come out the other side of all of this stronger. Uh, and I identified some key areas that I've got here on the slide, um, looking at a real need to uh, better support our workforce with things like childcare access and housing that they can afford, um, looking at infrastructure and in particular broadband and the impacts to our residents and businesses that don't have robust access to that thing that we think of as basic infrastructure today. Um, and then the value of that coordinated business support um, in, in helping address some of those needs. Um, and those, as with the SEDS are sort of uh, opportunities to think about the whole picture of community and economic development in our region and and sort of provide some foundation for some of that collaborative work moving forward that some of our partners um, are more likely to lead than us in the economic development space for workforce and housing partners and all those kinds of different folks coming to the table to think about strategies to move those pieces forward. Um, the next piece of kind of the puzzle for MCED and how we operate and support economic development in the region uh, is looking at kind of this coordination and technical assistance, sort of two buckets. Um, uh, for regional coordination, really thinking about uh, issues, um, challenges, and opportunities that impact our five county area, and we're seeing kind of across borders. Um, so thinking about industry cluster support, knowing that our our industries you know, are located on both sides of the river um, and collaborate together closely um, throughout the region. Um, and on our, this most recent update of the SEDS, we've identified these key industry clusters as areas to work. So we work closely with our industry associations where they exist um, or with uh, members of that small business community to help engage and support. Um, and identify opportunities to enhance um, those um, business se sectors in our area. Um, we also do coordination around sort of key issues facing the region. Uh, some of the most uh, clearing, I think, uh, and sort of ones too that don't have as much um, other kind of collaborative framework around them um, are things like broadband access and utilization. So uh, having a regional conversation, um, knowing that our providers and our funding sources are working at that larger level and how we organize uh, collectively to try to bring those resources to close the digital divide here. Um, or transit, um, transit and transportation planning, uh, looking at opportunities to help support those, those entities as a network um, and then sort of broader kind of community and economic resilience pieces um, that have a pretty wide table to set um, to move forward. Um, and then the technical assistance piece, um, we really try to work closely with our communities to help support increasing capacity around some of these key issues um, or economic development projects. So this can be a, a wide variety of things, but can include stuff like, um, like our grant writing and grant management for uh, infrastructure projects, bringing um, funding into the region to help support those or helping our entities like the, the city, for example, we're working closely with them on uh, the Dog River Pipeline project to ensure that as, the, um, as they move forward, all of the grant requirements for those funds they're bringing in, um, they're crossing their T's and dotting their I's. Um, 
as they move forward. We have some expertise in that area. Um, or it can be things uh, like we're going to talk a little bit more about next with our support for the Wasco County Economic Development Commission um, or uh, bringing in some grants to look at uh, some of these key economic development issues at a regional level. Uh, so this one I really wanted to spend a little bit of time on with you all this morning um, because we are talking about uh, the Dallas uh, government affairs here. And so I um, wanted to touch on what we're doing with the Wasco County Economic Development Commission. Um, and this, this is a body that we support. Um, a big thank you to the county for working with us on that. Um, that's supported by a contract with them uh, to help provide staffing for the Economic Development Commission. And the Economic Development Commission itself is an 11 member body that the county commission appoints. Uh, it looks at um, sort of geographic as well as industry diversity and in trying to make, um, make up a good holistic picture of what's going on in the county and getting representation at that table. Um, and, and those folks um, then guide the work that staff does uh, to support economic development throughout the county. Um, and we are actually working through an update of our strategic plan as well um, <laughs> for that entity. Uh, but we've got a sort of the mission uh, noted here on the slide and then kind of the role that the Economic Development Commission and its staff play in the county, uh, looking at trying to uh, make sure that uh, partners in the county Commission are aware of community and economic development activity uh, around the county as well as sort of current economic conditions, um, working really closely with our communities um, to support capacity building, whether that be bringing in um, training opportunities for them around key issues or literally sitting down with them to work on grant application or preparedness for projects to get them ready to the to the point where they can access those funds. Uh, and then as with McKed, kind of providing leadership on economic development issues that span the county. So I wanted to touch on just a few things that we're working on uh, with the Economic Development Commission. Um, uh, the first one is um, the commission set up a goal related to creating a vibrant and diverse local economy. And this slide is messy, but I think intentionally so. So bear with me for just a sec. Um, uh, we, we've been uh, able to work uh, with, uh, in particular, the port and the community college through a uh, process with the Center on Rural Innovation over the last um, Oh, eight or 10 months to look at uh, impacts of um, digital economic opportunities on our broader community and economic development space um, and how they can support a strong and robust economy. Um, and that group is really interested in doing some fact finding uh, and understanding a deep dive into sort of what the whole system supporting community and economic development in our county looks like um, with some support from Business Oregon. Um, and I think the slide is messy because the work is messy. <laughs> uh, and thinking about all of these different pieces that go into these conversations about economic development and what that really means to create a place where businesses can grow and thrive is really about also creating a place where our community members can do the same. And so thinking about the partners and opportunities at the table to sort of build that ecosystem together um, with partners like the chamber and the college uh, and the cities um, and everybody else that's here in the room too. So um, we're really excited to kind of dive into this and think about what this looks like in our community in Wasco County and implications for the broader region in that effort as well. Um, so stay tuned. Maybe next time I come talk to you, it'll be a little bit less messy, but um, we're excited to kind of get our hands dirty and talk with folks uh, that are starting or growing businesses to better understand their experiences in the system um, and work together to identify ways to move us forward. Um, the next one I wanted to highlight is um, some infrastructure work, um, and you, many of you have probably heard me say this before, but uh, I think it's a really important one to highlight. Um, at its core, sort of community and economic development is really 
about creating space um, for for businesses and communities to grow and thrive. And the thing that's um, critical for that, in addition to all of the other messy things on that slide, uh, that last slide is really looking at sort of critical infrastructure and ensuring that land is developable within our community for folks to be able to start and grow businesses or find places to live. Um, and so the Economic Development Commission really focuses on that um, through really close engagement with especially our smaller sort of water and wastewater providers around the county and ensuring they have access Access to funds at a higher level, but the one I really want to touch on um, is the newly formed Wasco County Brad Dan Action Team, uh, affectionately known as the BAT, <laughs> uh, is a group of partners from around the county interested in closing uh, the digital divide through identifying areas where we don't have the infrastructure that's needed for folks to access true broadband. Uh, and, and internet speeds fast enough to do things like this um, or run a business or do their homework or talk to their doctors, um, all of those critical things that we use broadband for today. Um, I truly believe that without broadband access, um, our communities won't continue to to exist, let alone thrive. And so this is something that's really important um, to laying that long-term foundation for economic development in the county. Um, and we are working sort of as a first project for this group um, and is a collaboration with a, a statewide group of broadband action teams that's looking at increasing um, information and data around where those gaps exist. Um, so we'll be working with that group to do a survey push and um, a request for folks to take a speed test so that we can really see what folks are experiencing on the ground. Um, and we'll be doing that with that broadband action team in Wasco County, but throughout the Gorge with our Columbia Gorge Broadband Consortium um, that McHead staffs. Um, and don't worry, Dan. We're working with the broadband office in Washington to make sure the data on the Washington side gets to them too. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Gary, I was about to respond to Scott, but uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I haven't been watching the chat. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll yeah. put something to the chat anyway, so people have an update. <laughs> there will be more coming to you. <laughs> Uh, but that's going to be a really big push as soon as we get the portal similar to what's on the Washington State Broadband Office's site uh, up and running with those statewide partners. Um, we will do a big push there and we'll appreciate all of you keeping an eye out for that and sharing with your networks. We want to make sure that folks from across the county have a chance to provide that feedback. Um, and in Moscow County, um, we will definitely be working with community partners to make sure that for folks that don't have the access they need to take that test, speed test and survey, that we're working on strategies to gather that input through paper copies as well. Um, and I am hoping that this work, along with some of our other infrastructure work, is really helping to set our communities up to access some of the federal resources that are coming down the pipeline with the new infrastructure bill and other kind of conversations um, and some of the ARPA funds that have come down as well. So that is one, uh, I think this is a, a big opportunity for our communities to make some leaps in those infrastructure needs that are um, pretty significant. So that's where I'll be with my head down. <laughs> uh for for a good chunk of this next little bit <laughs> uh the other one i wanted to highlight the last piece i have here and then i'll stop talking um and we can have the conversation uh but uh, i just really wanted to highlight this one uh, i think it's a really unique opportunity that we have right now um and a big thank you to the city of the dallas who really took the lead in this effort um, working with support in the county through the economic development commission uh, to access some um, EPA funds um, to help address brownfields in our communities throughout the county with the focus on the city. Um, uh, brownfields, as a reminder, are um, 
properties that either have a real or perceived environmental issues that can impact redevelopment. So that uncertainty question can really give a developer pause about whether or not they want to take on a site and, and, and make the improvements they need because they're unsure what that cost might look like and they can't plan for something they don't know. Um, and so these funds are available um, to support a consultant that the city has on contract um, to come out and do environmental assessments, um, hazardous building material reviews, um, so things like lead and asbestos. Um, they can look at underground storage tanks. Um, and they can also do redevelopment planning. Um, so if somebody has an idea for what they want to do with it and it's in fairly good shape, sort of environmentally wise, there are some resources that can be available uh, to help do stuff like site planning or floor planning or whatever that might look like um, to help kind of get a property from underutilized sort of back to full use. Um, and we've got seven projects underway right now and a few more in the pipeline. Um, we've got close to half the $600,000 that were provided by EPA committed um to projects already um uh, but we have that that additional resource and this is a program that's getting a lot of money um and some of the activity going on at the federal level and so we are really hoping to be able to move this forward and explore whether or not we can get some additional resources for our community because it is it is a unique one and that it can serve both public and private properties there's very little uh cleanup fund funding um, or, um, or assessment funding that's available to some of our private sector folks uh, that are doing the bulk of the development in our communities. Um, examples of projects that we've worked on thus far, um, we've worked with the urban renewal in the city to help support removing an underground storage tank uh, at the Tony's building in preparation for its next steps. Um, we've supported uh, some environmental assessment at um, in the upstairs over the last stop, as well as doing some planning um, for what it might look like to put housing units up there. Um, we've worked with Dirt Hugger um, at their new site out at the old Jones Wrecking Yard on the west side uh, to do some additional environmental assessment so they can explore opportunities to further develop out that property. So just a few examples of the types of projects that, that these funds can help support. Um, so if you are out and about and find somebody that you think might be interested, please do direct them the uh, the city's got a page up on their website and Jim Schweinoff is really the point person, but you're welcome to send them um, to, to me, uh, to Andrea at the port or to Jim, and we can all kind of help direct them uh, on how to best access those resources. Um, and that is what I've got. Um. <laughs> Hey, Carrie, it's Scott from the Art Center. Uh, just was curious, I saw the opportunities or what you're working towards with grant writing. Is that mm -hmm. support with grant writing or is that, okay. Are you, um, I've been following the Rural Development Initiative and in the fall they did four workshops um, that were on uh, Zoom and you could uh, go in. I know they're doing it again in the spring. Um, so is that something you would work with them on or? Um, and what, what's your relationship with the Rural Development Initiative? Uh, so we work with them on, on things occasionally and sort of serving our communities um, with that kind of thing, um, like the grant writing workshop, and they're doing another, like you said, this spring in uh, March and April, um, sort of uh, getting ready to put in a grant you know, sort of all of the fun fundamentals you need to prepare to get to the point where you're you're submitting that application. Um, you know, we often will share that stuff out with our community folks that we think might find value in it. Um, and we are actually um, sort of on a related path working on putting together with a couple of partners in the region, a sort of more targeted uh, grant writing workshop in our communities. Um, so we'll have some information about that in the next few weeks, I hope. But um, intention is would be to 
we're keeping an eye on that and to build on that um, so that it's sort of what that next stage is like really writing the grant application. Do you, um, do you have any uh, writers, grant writers that um, you have used or would recommend? I'm just finding that um, at least with the art community that people are very secretive about who they're using. Uh, so every time I ask, it's it's like a, <laughs> this wall comes up and they're like, I'm not sharing, that's not. Mm -mm. So I'm wondering if you have any resource there. Uh, so we write our own grants and we help other folks write them um, as we have capacity to do that. Um, so I don't have any off the top of my head um, that are private sector folks that do that work. It's Scott. Actually, um, just remind me, and I can at least put you in touch. We actually have a regional uh, person for the tourism aspect, which would include your uh, So yeah. she is housed in the Portland Hood area, um, but she is now for our entire Hood Gorge region. So I'm yeah. sure it's on availability and all of that, but I'm sure she can help. So just remind me with an email and I'll get that contact info for you. Okay, thank you, Liz. You bet. Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. Um, I was wondering um, on the BAT, the Broadband mm -hmm. Action Team, um, how does that work with Q Life? Um, what what is the difference there? I really wasn't aware of the BAT until this morning. And new, and we haven't talked too much about it yet. So. Okay. <laughs> But it was actually a recommendation coming out of QLife's strategic plan um, that uh, that we consider forming a bat in Moscow County. And it's QLife is at the table and participating in that along with some of our uh, private sector um, service providers, um, but it's also a space where um, we have community representatives, nonprofit representatives, um, folks that are really interested in engaging around the topic. Um, and I think uh, it's a really powerful tool to get uh, perspectives from those different folks that are serving different communities and sort of what's what access is like and what barriers are like for those those places or those people um, around the county. And then also, I think we found over the years as well that each of those different kinds of entities can bring different resources to the table when we look at trying to address this. Um, so. Uh, for example, down in Maupin, you know, with, in partnership with the ESC, they were able to support um, accessing some federal dollars to bring um, a fiber backbone into town that was accessible to more folks. So, you know, they were able to partner that with some more community and economic development funding um, from regional solutions in the legislature, and then also some funding related to getting the health clinic hooked up to sort of pull all those pieces together to build out that project. And I think as we move forward, um, that's really critical when we're talking about building infrastructure to these places, because at the end of the day, there's no business case for a private sector person to come in and do these places. If there was, it would already be built. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, I think, gonna be really important as we get some of that infrastructure on the ground and thinking about how our community can use it for the impact that it can have. Because I think it's not something where you build the infrastructure and all of a sudden those benefits appear. It's thinking about what kind of training our business folks need or um, some of the digital literacy things that a partner like the libraries would do um, to sort of help folks get more familiar with those devices and understand how to use them. So some of those kinds of things too, I think we're trying to sort of put a foundation down for. Mm. It, are the meetings um, open to the public or? Yeah, they're just, they're, whoever wants to join is more than welcome. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're not like formal public meetings. So we mm -hmm. haven't been doing notices, but sure. I'm more than happy to add anyone who's interested to the list. Would you add yeah. me? Yes, Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Hey, um, I was curious, uh, 
There was on Monday, there's a request for another hearing for funding for um, the arts in uh, Oregon. And then that got approved. I believe it's going to go to um, Monday um, to kind of move forward. Are, are you tracking this, um, Carrie? Uh, we track some legislation. Um, I won't say that it's a huge um, focus for us. And then when we are, it's really probably a little bit more targeted on some of those infrastructure pieces and then sort of a core economic development kind of legislation because we can leverage some of our statewide associations or even the, our national association for federal pieces. Um, so I haven't, I'm not familiar with that one, Scott. Okay, no problem. If anyone's interested, they were taking um, testimony and uh, they were interested in hearing um, from the different communities. So if anybody's interested in that, you can uh, just contact me. I'll put my email in the, in this, but uh, it looks like they're going to hopefully approve another $50 million. So they have the $50 million that they've allocated um, now for performance um, venues. And then uh, they're going to do, uh, it looks like hopefully another $50 million. Um, and it's so interesting because Oregon has, um, provided more funding and support for the arts and organizations. It's the most in the country. Um, and it's, it's definitely kept us afloat. And I know it's kept uh, CCA afloat. So anyway, if anyone's interested in uh, getting involved with that, uh, I'll put my email in the, in the chat and then I can get you in contact. Thank you, Scott. It does sound like it's going to be a very busy short session. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is. Um, do we have more questions? Thank you for the PowerPoint. Carrie, do you think I can get access to that or do you guys not like to distribute without? Okay. I can. Oh, yeah. Great. We would like to include that in our e-blast next week with the recording of this session. So yeah, so people have- Oh, uh, everybody will even be able to see me on my first cup of coffee. <laughs> Along with all the rest of us, so you're good. Um, <laughs> One time I started taking a shower, Carrie, and then Lisa kindly uh, shut me yeah. down. Yeah, I shut me down. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I wasn't awake Careful. and I wasn't paying attention. You got to be careful out here a little bit, so, but we try to help and protect you, so, uh, but no, we do appreciate this. Um, while you guys are thinking of another question, I will address a question that we've been asked multiple times is, when can we do this in person? And I'm not ready to go there yet. Um, most of our restaurants can't handle extra, um, and I don't want to burden um, and having them short-staffed in that piece. But here's, here's the good and bad in Zoom. I actually have people from all over on this, whereas it would be a smaller group just in the Dalles, usually at the breakfast. So we've actually been able to increase the attendance, bring in speakers that are not here, bring in our legislation and actually see them eye to eye instead of on a recording on a speaker. So right now I'm keeping this until I know that my... A uh, restaurant can handle extra people. And right now we're getting people all over because I'm sure, um, you know, Dawson probably can't um, drive here every Thursday morning to be this, but I love knowing that Representative Smith's office is here on this call, um, paying attention to what is actually, you know, happening in our own community. So right now for, for now folks, um, yeah, and we don't have to worry about a projector shutting down partway through a slide presentation. So yes, that's true too. It's very easy. So right now we're going to keep and using the advantage of Zoom for this particular community group. Um, if you really want to see face-to-face, -face, we've got three other types of events happening every month where you can come and connect with people face-to-face. -face. Um, so uh, 
just be patient with us. And for now, we're going to keep with this mode. And we don't know. We don't know if it'll go back to being in person, uh, just because this does provide some advantages, especially with our legislators uh, being able to hop on and talk to us where we can see their eyeballs. Um, and sometimes that's crucial. So um, with that, I gave you guys all time to come up with a question. Um, oh, I love it. Keith, you're in Newport. I hope you're out there taking a deep breath on that coastline. It's gorgeous over there. Um, and do that for us in the sun. But any other questions for Carrie or McKen? Carrie, thank you so much for putting that all together. I know McKed is a key uh, resource, information, and partner for the economic development for our county, but also for our community right here in the Dells. So thank you for taking time early this morning um, and doing this for us. And we will have everything out for you guys in the e-blast on Monday in the chamber wire. So. With that, I'm going to give you guys a couple extra minutes to go find another cup of coffee before you start your other work day. So every, oh wait, Dan has something to say. Shocker. And you're muted, Dan. Unmute. You're still muted. Oh, I should know better than that. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> no, we're fine. Okay. Did you want to say something? Nope. Oh, okay. So with that, everyone have a um, fantastic day. Support local. Come see us if you have any questions. We have a lot going on. We have an amazing power breakfast tomorrow morning at seven. Um, I can't wait. Uh, Busania will be there and helping you to find your voice and that inner energy to plug a little bit more so that we can make it and get through the end of this with our businesses and supporting our community. So um, if you're interested, give me a call. If not, we will see you guys next week. So take care. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Lisa.